Oh, good evening, I'm Sean Green with the CBC Sports. Well, West Terrace Primary will join Bailey's in the final of the Guardian Group Herman Griffith Primary Schools Cricket Competition. Uh, playing at Dover today, St. Giles took first knock and scored 106 for 5. Sachin Marshall top scored with 26. And Robert takes a look at the first innings highlights. With Bailey's already in the final, the fight was on for the next spot. So here we go with the second semi-final. St. Giles batting first gets a show on the road through a Vera Cottle who drives his ball past point for the first boundary. He said the crease wouldn't be long, however, as he is bowled for nine when he plays down the wrong line off a Zion Brathwaite delivery. The score, 24 one Romal Smith would be the second to depart when he's trapped in front via the bowling of Rashawn Hackett for 12, 45 for two now. Captain Sachin Marshall was there and he plays a piercing cover drive to help his team's total. He and Sanchez Reed Haynes put on some 27 runs before Marshall was given out LBW by the umpire off the bowling of Jonathan Harmer, 72 for three. From 72 for three, it went to 73 for four, when Chris Narayan goes straight through Kishan Ram's defense. Narayan seemed to be watching his namesake Sunil as he was on target once more, removing Jaden Martindale for a duck, 73 for five. With Reed Haynes still at the crease, St. Giles were under no pressure. Here he gives the right treatment to this Narayan full toss. Then he stands and delivers over mid-wicket for another boundary. West Terrace, however, gave 100% in the field, chasing every ball and saving every run they could. But by the end of the innings, St. Giles had accumulated some 106 runs for just five wickets, leaving West Terrace 107 for victory. Anne-Marie Burke, CBC Sports. Well, in reply, West Terrace reached the target, losing only three wickets. Zion Braffitt top scored for West Terrace with 40 not out. Well, a strong Barbados Pride team has been named for the fourth round clash in the regional four-day championship against the reigning champions, Guyana Jaguars. Returning are test players Craig Braffitt, who skipper the squad, Jonathan Carter, Shane Dorwich, Shea Hope, and Ashley Nurse for the day next fixture at Providence. They will replace the injured Ken Roy Williams, the wicketkeeper Mario Rampersad, leg spinner Nikolai Charles, and batsman Aaron Jones, and fast bowler Kevin McLean. West Indies captain Jason Holder, Carlos Braffitt, Suleiman Bend, and Miguel Cummins were also in the Tri Nation series squad but are not a part of the contingent for the trip to Georgetown. The Pride team is lying second on 33.4 points, narrowly behind the leaders, the Jaguars, on 33.06 points. In football news, defending champions of the David Thompson Constituency Council Football Classic, Christchurch East Central, will meet St. George South in Sunday's big final. Now, last night at Gore Hill, both were victorious in their semis when St. George South dispatched St. Michael South and Christchurch East Central beat the city of Bridgetown, both by 2-1 margins. St. Michael South in the yellow, St. George South in the blue, and the yellow shirts with a sniff. No. Another chance for St. Michael South to open up the bag. Not again. St. George South at the other end with a clear chance here. But again, the keeper is a threat. But he wasn't a threat here as Romario Watson finds the angle in the tangle to put St. George South up 1-0. Second half and a second threat for the St. Michael South keeper as Shaquille Bell buries this one past him. A powerful corner blast finds the head of Tristan Paris and he nails his jump to perfection to put it into the back of the bars. Look at trouble, look at trouble brewing at the other end. A minute later, St. George running away, but the offside flag is blowing in the wind, but they didn't need any more. 2 1 was enough to beat St. Michael South. City of Bridgetown taking on Christchurch East Central in the blue and white. Watch out, Troy Speak, Rag Beer. A thunderous blast rips a hole in the defense and almost in the net as well. The Christchurch team up by one early in the piece. Second half and after the city of Bridgetown had scored to equalize, they were looking to clear this one, but they didn't. And once they failed, Jabari Chandler made sure he succeeded in the 73rd minute to give the Christchurch East Central side the 2-1 win and a spot in Sunday's final. 
Well, five swimmers will be representing Barbados at the World Short Course Championships, which start tomorrow in Canada. These are Lani Cabrera, Alex Sobers, Michaela Treasure, Daniel Titus, and Chris Curtis. And CBC Sports caught up with them during their final practice session just prior to their departure. The young team was in good spirits when we caught up with them at the Aquatic Centre during their preparations. Meet Michaela Treasure and Daniel Titus, who will be at their first World Short Course. I just want to better my times because this is my first world championship so I just want to better my times and hopefully make my country proud. I'm a bit nervous but I'm still going to do my best so I'm not all that confident but I'm still going to perform to my maximum. The contingent made up of swimmers includes Rio Olympians Lani Cabrera and Alex Sobers. Lani spoke about her chances as well as how she plans to help the first timers. Well I'm excited this is going to be my third short course world championships. Um, I love racing short course, short course, so it should be fun. Um, I'm doing the shorter events this time around, the 200 free and the 100 free, um, which is kind of new for me, so it should be fun to see how that goes. Um, I've had a good 200 over the last year, so I'm excited to see my short course meter results. Two of the girls are new to the world championships, so I'm very excited to kind of mentor them, so to speak. Um, I have great, we all have great relationships, we all get along very well, um, so it will be great to kind of be together. Um, we're meeting Chris in Canada and he has been at, he's another uh, elder on the team and he's been at a few Commonwealth games and big games before, so it will be great for Chris and I to kind of show the ropes to Michaela and Danielle. Overseas based Alex, who returned to Barbados this week, is looking to lower his times. Every time you sit on the block, like, I'm going to go like, to beat my best time. Um, do my best all the time. Manager Andrea Titus believes the swimmers have a good chance of achieving personal best and the first timers have the potential to go all the way to the Olympics. What I can say is that they might be able to do some personal best because we are looking at competing against those persons who would have swam at the Olympics. All right, so but I believe that they will be able to accomplish personal best at this particular meet. I believe that. Uh, most of the swimmers are interested in representing Barbados at the Olympics and I believe that if they continue in the path they will do Barbados well. The swimmers will meet Chris Cortis in Canada and the championships will begin on December 6. Well, the foundation school journeyed to Crumpton Street and dished out a beating on the Harrison College A team recently in the Mass United Insurance Senior Schools basketball competition. It was an even first quarter between Foundation in the goal and black kit and the college boys. Here, Dominic Jarvis with the layup, adding two more points. Foundation pressing on in the early stages. Come out, boys, converting two more. Now check out this play, Shaquan Carrington with a steal. The layup finish, and he draws the foul as well. The college boys had seen enough, and they started to bounce back. Joshua Lowe just moments later with a fake as he baskets another for college. Lowe on the offense again and converts as the quarter ends on an even 11 points. On to the third, Foundation well motivated from their 24-22 second quarter advantage. Jarvis shakes the college defense and baskets two of his 14. College was still in the game. Lowe with a three-pointer and a team high 11 points. But Foundation kept extending their lead as they entered the final quarter, 40-30. to 30. Jarvis with nothing but net, that's two more. Boys returned to the action and collects and converts two of his game-high 18. Foundation went on to claim victory, finishing the game 52-46. to 46. Sean Green. Thank you very much. That's it for Sports. Shane Jones returns with the weather news.